Whiskerslicious. Hello everyone and welcome to my comprehensive breakdown and guide to everything Team Deathmatch in PUBG. Team Deathmatch has now been added as an arcade game mode currently exclusive to the test server as of this video. Of course, there are many things that are subject to change between now and then when it hits live servers, but for the time being, I wanted to give you guys as much help and information as possible in order to ensure you're getting the most out of this new game mode. Let's start with a synopsis of how Team Deathmatch works in PUBG. PUBG's Team Deathmatch consists of two teams of eight, competing for kills in a best two out of three round format. Rounds are won when one of the team reaches either 50 kills or whoever has the most kills at the end of the 10 minute time limit. At the end of each round, teams will swap sides on the map to their opposing team's initial spawn location, a pretty nice feature since it allows teams and players to experience both sides of the map fairly. The maps for Team Deathmatch are tightly contained sections from the various Battle Royale maps, to which there are seven in total. I find that each map plays fairly differently and tends to favor a certain playstyle over the others. For instance, the runway on Erangel's military base and the Podvosto bridge seem to benefit snipers and DMRs over assault rifles and other CQC weapons as they offer much longer sightlines and wide open coverless areas. With that said, the other maps play out quite well for all other styles of play. The other maps include Campo Militar from Miramar, Docks and Paradise Resort from Sanok, Stalber from Erangel and Pashkova from Bikindi. As is with the Battle Royale mode, map selection is completely random but seems to do a fairly decent job of mixing up the locations. That said, I did feel there was a disproportionate amount of my games where I was put into the Erangel runway matches, but so far that just remains anecdotal. Mechanically, the maps play out how you would expect. The spawning system seems to do a pretty good job of placing you back into the map without it impending your ability to defend yourself. This is especially easier to do with the 3 seconds of immunity players receive upon respawning back into the map. This is sort of a double-edged sword since, yes, it greatly benefits the player spawning, but if you happen upon someone who just spawned and get into a fight with them, they are able to deal damage without receiving any at all. I've seen some suggestions that this sort of thing could be mitigated if the person only retains their immunity during the intended duration if they don't fire their weapon. I think this would make for a solid change and balance out the combat a little bit more. When the match starts, players are given the choice of choosing their desired loadout. There are 8 loadouts in total. 2 for assault rifles, 2 for DMRs, 2 sniper rifles, 1 submachine gun, and 1 shotgun. The details of which I'll go over here in just a little bit. The loadouts can be changed at any time during the game by pressing M or whatever your default map hotkey is. The loadouts can be changed at any time during the game by pressing M or whatever your default map key is. Note, the loadout itself will not be changed until the next time you respawn. Alongside the default loadouts, various airdrops are spawned into the map at random, allowing players to access crate-exclusive weapons and gear, including level 3 helmets and vests, ghillie suits, the AWM, Groza, M249, and the AUG. Now let's look at the various loadouts and what all is included with each kit. Note, each kit includes a level 3 bag, one frag grenade, and the frying pan. The AKM loadout consists of the AKM, equipped with a compensator, red dot, and an extended quick draw mag. The included sidearm is the Deagle, equipped with a holographic side as well. The loadout includes a level 1 helmet, level 1 vest, 150 rounds of primary ammo, and 30 rounds of .45mm. The M4 loadout is the exact same as the AKM, with the addition of the vert grip and the tactical stock. For the DMRs, we have the Mini-14 and the SLR. These loadouts are also relatively the same, both including the Compensator, Extended Quick Draw Mag, 4, 6, and 8x scopes, with the exception being that the SLR has the cheek pad attached. The sidearm for this one is instead the P-1911, which still includes the holographic sight. The loadout also includes Level 2 Helmet, Level 2 Vest, 90 rounds of primary ammo, and 30 rounds of 45. The sniper rifle loadouts consist of the CAR-98 and the M24. Again, both kits are the same, with exception of the bullet loops for the CAR-98 and the extended mag for the M24. Both include the sniper suppressor, 4, 6, and 8x scopes, and the included sidearm is the sawed-off shotgun. Both of these loadouts also include the level 2 helmet, level 2 vest, 60 rounds of primary ammo, and 20 shotgun shells. Up next is the Vector, which comes equipped with red dot sight, extended quick draw mag, tactical stock, vert grip, and the compensator. Paired with the Deagle, equipped with the hollow sight as well. Included in this kit is the level 2 helmet, level 2 vest, 130 rounds of 9mm, and 30 rounds of 45. 
And finally, we have the DBS shotgun, which only comes equipped with a red dot, as well as a deagle with a holographic. This kit also comes with the level 2 helmet and vest, 40 shotgun shells, and 30 rounds of 45. For the most part, I feel the loadouts are pretty balanced, but would rather have everyone have the same vest and helmet option. I do appreciate the limit of the throwables to one, but there are still times when the sound of gunfire and explosions tend to be a little overwhelming, occasionally causing cracks or momentary breaks in the audio. Nothing game breaking, but it can be annoying at times. Lastly, as is tradition with my channel, I'd like to leave you guys with some tips and tricks you can use to get a little bit more out of the team deathmatch in PUBG. The first tip is scopes. If you're someone who enjoys using the AR loadouts but is a weirdo like me who for some reason likes to use the hollow sight, then you'll appreciate having one on the deagle you can swap over to the assault rifle to use. On the topic of scopes, it's also easy enough to loot either the 4 or 6x off the bodies of one of the other players who had either a DMR or a sniper loadout. The 6x is especially versatile as it is able to zoom out to the range of a 3x making it a great scope for long distance sprays. While we're talking about looting, you can also take the helmets and vests found off the bodies of dead players as well. In Team Deathmatch, vests and helmets still take damage and can be broken, but if you die before either are fully destroyed, then they become lootable to other players but at a full health. A good tip is to keep in mind if you find yourself pinned down with low gear. Moving over to health, this also works a bit differently than you may be used to. If you take any damage, you can begin regaining health back after 5 seconds of not taking any. You can only regain your HP back to full if your boost meter has any amount to restore your health. Your boost meter can be filled by either killing other players or assisting other players in their kill. If your boost meter runs out but you regenerate your health back, then your health will only refill up to the standard 75% without boost. Lastly, if you suspect a player may be cheating, then during the respawn screen, you can press the R key to pull up the report screen. From here, you have the option of choosing any of the members from the opposing team, not just the player who killed you. Of course, without the kill cam to show us their point of view, it may make it difficult to know with certainty that the other player was in fact cheating. Well that's going to do it for this video, I hope you guys got something out of this and can take it into your next games of Team Deathmatch. I believe this is a solid game mode for PUBG and quite possibly one of the best ways to get familiar with the gunplay and the systems the game has to offer. Something I felt Black Ops 4 didn't quite nail by having standard multiplayer feel one way and the blackout mode feel another. In PUBG, it's the same for both modes, just one lets you respawn and have some fun. So if you're someone who's struggling to get comfortable shooting some of the guns, or looking for good gunfight practice, then I strongly suggest putting some time into Team Deathmatch while you can.